Welcome back to the Scope Podcast. I'm here with Flano. We only just ran into each other recently, bro, in a little trip up to Byron. How's it been, mate? How was your trip up to Byron and uh, how's it been at the Dogs so far? Yeah, cheers, mate. Um, yeah, it wasn't too long ago that we're up in Byron together and um, yeah, dog life's been going good so far and um, the season's coming around pretty quick. Yeah, beautiful. Lukey, just before we get into it as well, we want to touch on subscriptions. Yeah, it's been going really well. If you are watching this and you are not subscribed to the YKTR YouTube channel, Scope's coming straight for you next. So hit that subscribe button and you've got your little grateful to start that off, don't you? Yeah, we're going to get onto some grateful. We'd be very grateful if you sub- if you subscribed. Jeez, that's a good grateful from Lukey out of nowhere too. So appreciate that from you. We, we missed it this morning on uh, the, the podcast with the 257 boys. So I love that. I love that. A grateful from you, um, Flano. Have you got a grateful? This is the way we like to start, start our podcast. We, we're all about good energy, all about good vibes at YKTR Sports. What do you got for us, brother? I'm going to say I'm grateful for living at home for free. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good. Hey, and you yeah. know what? He would. He'll be getting yeah. looked after the dog. He's, he's on good coin at the doggies yeah, too. So uh, he's, he's saving up that money. Going to buy himself. Uh, I'm quite tight, you know. So. I love that, mate. Free that's rent, a, living at home with your parents. That, um, you can't beat it. That's a fucking really good grateful. Uh, having a little stab at himself, which we love too. <laughs> Are you going for a back-to-back grateful You today? know what? I'm going to do another grateful today. How about that? Um, I'm gonna, my grateful is uh, it's for our, uh, our father's relationship. Our dads actually played together back in the day uh, for Parramatta, so I'm grateful for, for their time together as players, and now we're getting the opportunity to do this today for a podcast. How about Unreal. that? Unreal. That's grateful. The life of rugby league, eh? This is where I do my best work, baby. Shit. Shit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's all right. Eh? It's, it's funny. Um, all right, mate. So I touched on our, our, our dad's relationships. So we'll get into a little bit of your dad's coaching career and whatnot. Uh, knowing myself growing up around footy, um, even more so with you, with your dad not only playing but, you know, in the in the coaching ranks. What was it like for you growing up just completely around the game? I think I've seen a picture of you and uh, Nath Cleary together as ball boys back in the Roosters day. So. Yeah, that's right. Um, that photo always surfaces when we play together and, um, yeah, that's my memory as a kid. Um, was going to footy games, being the ball boy for the Roosters and that, at Cronulla as well. And, um, yeah, just being in the sheds and as a young kid and looking up to big guys like Paul Gallen and um, – yeah, that's my memory as a kid. Yeah, so how old were you in, in that photo that resurfaces all the time uh, around when you used to play? How old were you then at the Roosters days? Because that's when I was around as well. So was that – I was – your your dad was my – was the assistant coach for first grade at the time and I was doing um, under-20s there, under-sticky. So how old were you around like 05, 06? Well, mate, I'd have to do the math right now, but uh, yeah. I'd be around 10 or 12 there at the oh, stage yeah. there. And um, obviously Nathan's a year older than me, but – um, yeah, I remember those days of the Roos as a bull boy um, quite well and, um, yeah, that's unreal experience. Yeah, well, what were some of those early memories? Are you, do, are you, were you and Nath, like, pretty close growing up because of those days or did you stay in touch? Obviously, Ivan moving on and coaching elsewhere as, as well as your dad going to the Sharks. How did, how did that relationship go? Did, that, did you extend that uh, as, you, as you got older? Yeah, not, not too much, I guess, as we got older, but we always knew of each other and um, always had a lay here and there, but... Um, yeah, I just remember that photo um, of Freddie, Freddie, Freddie Fittler's around his game and um, we both ran out for that game. And, yeah. Um, we've always been in touch since that day so um, and in the future as well. Yeah, it's great. Do you have um, – are there any, like, memories in particular, like, growing up around footy players, any any funny stories or anything? Because, or, like, like oh, yeah, I said – Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah like, I, like I said, I, um, one of the my first memories I can remember of footy is my dad went – in his last couple of years playing at the Warriors, and I used to just run him out of the tunnel. Back in the day, they used to have the beating drummers that come out, and I used to get real nervous before that too. But so, you know, obviously doing the same sort of vibe. Yeah, before that, um, the old man was uh, coaching at Parramatta, and all I remember was I was a bull boy there as well. And uh, Nathan Heimarsh used to come up to me and just scruff my hair up. My mum used to get my hair nice, plenty of gel in the hair. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that was one of the memories for me is Nathan Heimarsh, every time he saw me, just come up, scruff my hair up. and Put me in a headlock, so uh, yeah, old Hindy got me a beauty. Yeah, he's like that. He's got that scruffy hair, so he doesn't worry about that stuff, does he? Um, touching on, keep going on um, stuff with your dad. Uh, what was so? What are the? I asked Nate the same question too, and he had a quite an interesting answer because he's still affiliated with him now. Obviously, what's um, what are the pro? What's one pro and one con to having your dad in? You know, he's not coaching at the moment, but he was so successful. Like I said, you're coming through the junior grades at the Sharks. Uh, what was that like for you 
And, uh, you know, what if you're looking back on it, what was one pro and con to having your old boy as your coach? And yeah, it was quite a, a good experience. I think um, probably one pro is that the whole family is involved. I think, obviously, the old man's down there. I'm training down there. My whole two sisters and my mum like coming down to train and um, really supporting us. And I guess probably the con is... Uh, as a junior, people think you get there. You got there too easy, and the old man's just um, carrying you along the whole way. And yeah, because you're always quite a big deal from like coming through. Because I remember hearing about your name coming through, and and I don't know if that's, you know, sometimes that that's when when those sort of fucking negative people come out and start talking about it just because of your name. But yeah, I, I struggled quite hard, you know, in hard match days under sixteens and under eighteens when people were saying, "Are you only here because of your dad?" Or yeah, um, you yeah, took you've it got, hard, you got eh? a special path and. But I guess that probably motivated me more to, to really kick on and really prove to people that I can play first grade. And <clears throat> um, and also another another pro is probably um, he knew when I was ready for first grade. Um, yep. He knows my game better than anyone else. Yeah, that's gone. Um, it was obviously unreal to play with him. Yeah. Do you um do you sit down and now I like, can still break down some of your film, like, watch games together, <laughs> watch other games and, uh, and dissect yeah. them pretty hard? Like, yeah, for thoroughly? sure. Um, yeah, sometimes we get quite serious about it and sit down and – um, really break it down whether that's a tackle or defence but um, yeah he can get a bit annoying sometimes you know he wants to talk about footy 24-7 when I get home but mm. um, yeah I'm grateful for him being my old man and um, having that support network there yeah for sure is he um, so he's, he's out of a gig at the moment is is all this stuff good to go is he ready to, can he coach uh, first grade next year yeah I believe so um, I have to wait and see yeah. uh, what coaches make it through but um, he's super keen to get back into, into footy and um, I'm sure something will pop up for him yeah for sure if I was um you know, depending on how clubs go this year, though, um, if you've got the opportunity to have premiership winning coach, he'd probably be the probably the first name on a lot of lists when when the time comes. So, like I said, I've, I've had a <laughs> few sprays. I, I've had a few few sprays from Flano back in the day. Uh, like I said to you on the way up, I uh, there's there's two ways you can take some of those things when you're younger, and he was from the old school, like those two in particular, like him and so he was the assistant coach to Sticky. And uh, some of the sprays that I got from him were fucking top shelf. Yeah, I imagine the old man learnt from the best Ricky's chair, yeah. I imagine. Yeah, that was, a, that was a school hard knocks coming through those grades. But I appreciate it now, especially looking back on it. When you, By the time you get to the end of your career, you can, like I said, you can take it one way or you can use it as motivation. And definitely I use some of those things as motivation. And I know Finch, he's talked about it before on his podcast with Sticky and whatnot. So I'd love to see him back coaching, mate. I, I know that living with Normie, him and Normie struck up a pretty good relationship and – uh, I think Flano didn't mind hearing some of Normie's stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, uh, he loves the story and he likes to get quite close to his players. And, yeah, um, yeah, really get a good connection with him. So same with Moisa. Moisa speaks highly of him as well. Yeah, he, he loves they... spraying Moisa too. Mate. Don't <laughs> worry about that. But um, yeah, all good guys. Yeah, good mate. Love to see him get back uh, coaching as soon as possible. All right, so coming through to the Sharks, mate. You make your debut with the Sharks. Um, you're from the area. What was that? What was that like for you? Yeah, best Come, ever. Yeah, um, they obviously made my de- debut underneath the old man um, at Shark Park in front of my family and friends. And uh, Luke Lewis played that game. That was his last game at Shark Park. And Fuck. obviously Paul Gallen, uh, Valentine Holmes played that day, and um, well. we got the win. So yeah, that that was honestly a dream come true, as as cliche as it sounds. And um, yeah, I got to play on with my mates that I've come through the juniors with, and um, yeah, special times. Yeah, so who? So a few of those boys. Obviously, one of them's gone through a rough time of late. But uh, you, you sort of was so you debuted in eighteen. Uh, eighteen, yeah, eighteen, yep. and then um, you end up after uh, what? What was the reason to move on from from Cronulla to the Roosters after? Oh, so no, so nineteen. Sorry, going into nineteen, you have a good season. You get a fair bit of footy under yep, your belt. Yep. Um, then you decide to move on at the Roosters at the back end of that year. What was the decision behind that? Yeah, so before I went to the Roosters, I played about ten games in first grade that year, and yep. uh, the following season is probably going to be pretty much the same sort of situation there. Um, Sean Johnson, and Chad Townsend were were playing there, and I found it hard, quite hard, to break that combination at times. So there was yep. an opportunity to go over to the Roosters and. Um, as I said before, uh, to really grow and develop in the role, and um, I couldn't say no to it, and um, yeah, I'm so grateful for that experience. So yeah, like you've got you've you've come through a pretty good school like of of halves now, like playing at the Roosters. I want to go back before we move on to the Roosters, just touch on the shark situation. If I feel like that's the ideal spot to like sort of learn your craft and come through with with guys like Chatty and, and Shawnee Johnson, and even Moisa to a degree, because Moisa would, was would have been floating around and playing a bit of six during that time as well. Two completely different halves. So what did you take from Chatty and what did you take from, from Shawnee watching them train, go about their business and, and play footy? 
Yeah, so first of all, it's quite hard to replicate what Sean Johnson yeah. does because he's a freak. <laughs> but uh, obviously, Chad is a quite a good game manager and um, he does his, his eight out of 10 every week. And obviously, Sean's running game and his ability to um, beat defenders is quite good. So, and also, Moiser, how he can ice a three on two better than anyone in the world. Yeah. So, um, just taking things out of their game and watching them train as a young kid was. Um, was quite good for me and um, I guess just playing in the Cronulla comp as a kid really helps it's quite a good good comp and you really want to be skillful um, coming through juniors and I guess that's helped me today yeah for sure yeah some nice uh, those three guys in particular like they're all completely different but really good at their craft in their own specific way you then move on to the Roosters Uh, there's an opportunity there to play seven uh, and then you get to play with a guy like like Luke Keary who's again Probably different again from from those three guys. Like, so what was that? What was it like going to the Roosters? What was your sort of your role when you got there? What the, what did they say? Especially coming in after a guy like the most, like I said in my scope spotlight, is because me, Kempi, and, and Rennie were talking about on the footy companion. And they're going, that's the spot. Like, every, you know, everyone would love to be playing there. And I was like, Fuck, that's a lot of pressure, man. If I can, yeah. Cooper Cronk's the most accomplished player, and then the boys are sort of. Taking the um, taking the piss out of me, saying that you're under pressure and all this, all that sort of stuff. But it was more like, fuck, those are big shoes to fill, bro. That's what I was trying to like get yeah, through. Definitely. And and so so what when you first rocked up, what did Robbo say to you? And then how did that all feel, sort of rolling into that a system that had been set back to back grand finals and whatnot? Yeah. So when I first got there, I just really wanted to focus on earning the respect of the boys, and um, that starts in the wrestling room, putting your head in places that. That you shouldn't, and um, I probably got to give credit to Luke Curie a lot. Um, he took me on his wing quite a lot, and I can't say a bad word about him. Yeah, we love Kezzy. He's a yeah, absolute freak of a player, and um, I guess just having that whole those whole group around me, Boyd Gordner, um, he's always pulling me aside and saying, "Mate, I needed to lead this football team," and um, that's why I went there to lead that footy team around. And yeah, um, yeah, unreal experience. Got to play in a World Cup challenge. Um, went over to Barcelona and England with the team, and. Um, yeah, I'm so grateful for those experiences. And I learned a lot over there. Yeah, but those, that's, that was another another reason too when I, that I touched on too. Like, yeah, they'd been so successful, but fuck, Rooster had played the most amount of games out of anyone in the last three years. Add in you doing those trips and going over and playing in those club challenges. I just thought a few of the boys looked a little bit tired. I, the the break looked like it done you the world of good with the little COVID break. You sort of come out of that firing, Fine, yeah. firing again, and you're fucking scoring points of fun, like I said. But what was uh. How, how did you find Robbo as a coach? Because I haven't, you know, despite the situation and you've moved on, I, I haven't heard anyone say a bad word about Robbo. How do you, how do you hold uh, Robbo in regard? Yeah, it's, it's hard to say quite right now because obviously I've moved on, but um, everyone respects him quite a lot there and um, he's quite a positive coach. Yep. Um, he looks at the game a lot differently to what I'm used to and um, obviously <clears> you've seen that the sex the Roosters have had and... Um, I've got to give credit to that leadership team there. Obviously, Boyd Cordner, James Tedesco, they really mould the game of the way the Roosters play. And um, yeah, they're obviously superstar players as well. Yeah, yeah, some uh, some big names in that group. There's on the um, and and then the other other thing that I was going to touch on too was with, with the Latrell thing. Obviously, Latrell moves on, so like all these combinations. But um, that finishes up. And then you've gone over the Bulldogs. Like I said, another thing that I said in that little scope spotlight, when I, when I seen you, I, th- I thought you'd probably be a little bit dejected, but you just seem really enthusiastic about the year, looking forward to the Bulldogs. What, what has Baz said to you? I know you've only been there for a couple of weeks. What's Baz said to you about how he expects you to run the team next year? Yeah, just probably just going back to the Roosters. I think I got a lot of confidence out for playing for the Roosters. You know, that they don't give away jerseys, you know, yeah. so you must be – Pretty decent football players if, you, if you're playing for the Roosters and playing halfback there. So uh, my confidence wasn't dented too much, you know. Obviously, um, now at the Bulldogs, I'm, I can't wait for the opportunity to, to lead that footy team around and um, to work with Baz. I had an opportunity to, to play with Baz a few years ago, actually, before I debuted at Manly. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, so uh, that was probably one thing that not too many people know. But, yep. um, yeah, yeah. At the Bulldogs now for three years. I can't wait for that opportunity. Um, obviously, the signings that we've, we've done this year and the Fox um, and Birdo coming next year is going to be unreal. And um, But it starts now and, yeah, I can't wait to hopefully be the, the start of the success for the Bulldogs. Yeah, so uh, what about what about the differing, differing roles between – I know it's only early as well, like I said, you, you're going into pre-season. How do you see your role being a little bit different compared to what you're doing at the Roosters? Is there anything in particular like already that you've noticed from Baz? Because – 
Uh, yeah, he's done some really good works with the Haas in the last couple of years. You look at Naif's year last year and, and DC the year before. Yeah, it's going to change quite a bit. You know, I think um, my average touches last year were around 40 and I think I really want to double that this year and yep. have my hands on the ball a lot more. So um, you hopefully see that in, in the first few rounds of the season. But um, yeah, I just want to take my game to the next level, and level I should say, and um, yeah, be quite dominant in the team. Obviously last year had guys like James Tedesco and Luke Keery who we need the ball in the best situations, but um, yeah, at the Bulldogs now, I can't wait to um, be that main man, I guess, and um, take the team with me. How's the um, the rotation system of who's, who? Do you know who's going to be partnering you in the heart? Or are you allowed to say? I know how sometimes <laughs> coaches get a little bit like that, but um, who have you had been flowing in with you at six? Yeah, everyone's been having a go at six there, and everyone's sort of a bit a bit different. But um, I'll give a shout out to Jake Avrilo. Yeah, um, he's been going quite good. He's a runner. Um, he's got X factor about him and. Um, yeah, he's a freak, something special about him. So, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, he could be a good chance. He fails a punter. <laughs> All the super coach kids are out there going, "Who's he going to play with? Yeah. Who's he going to play sure, with?" Mate, that'd be a big one. Like looking at looking at that position in particular. It was one of the fan questions that came through later as well. So. I, I th- yeah, oh, was it? Oh, beautiful. But uh, yeah, we'll get a few more of those questions at the end. Uh, be, being at the club now, you've you've come from a system where you've got. You name the guys at Boydy, Tedesco, all these sorts of players, big name players. Being a, there's, I watch sort of try to watch as many games with my mates as as possible. And one one guy that was playing there last year was Kieran Foran. And when I remember watching the the games, and you're going to be in a similar sort of uh, position this year, watch the Bulldogs and go fuck. They're trying their cunt out. Like mm, every definitely. game, that's one thing that I took out. Like there was never a game again that I watched the dogs where I felt like they fucking gave it in. They had a crack every game. They were just a little bit raw, young, uh, just, you know, inexperienced. So now coming from a club like, you, like you've come from now, who, who stood out for you? Out of some of those young guys that you think can make the, take the next step next year or you can see sort of taking those sort of positions that you, well, guys taking the next step like guys that the Roosters have and – yeah, I think Jake Avrilo is obviously the big name that um, I think will go have a big year next year in first grade. Uh, Matt Dury, he played a few games last year. Yep. And he's at a back row, so um, it's pretty exciting. There's a few other guys that have played Australian schoolboys that have been training with us, so um, things are looking quite good for the Bulldogs. I was quite surprised when I rocked up, you know, um, some really good kids coming through. And I guess talking about the defence there before, it starts with Josh Jackson. The first day I rocked up there um, – he starts the defence and that's his attitude and how hard he trains every day. So um, working with Baz next year, I'm sure our attack will look a lot better. And um, Yeah, the defence last year was – they were always turning up. They were always trying their hardest. Yeah, they were. Um, you've only got to score 18 points to win these days and um, I'm sure we can do that. Yeah, for sure. Josh Jackson, one of the uh, most underrated players, mate. Jacko's been doing that for a minute. He's a, he's a true warrior, isn't he? Definitely. Um, yeah. <laughs> he might be aging a bit. <laughs> yeah. How, how old would Jacko be now? 32, 33? I'm, I'm sure. turning 35. Say it again. I was up Josh there. Jackson. He, yeah. Uh, he still gives his all, you know. Um, yeah, well, yeah at least from the front, mate. That's definitely. what you want. You know, a lot of those guys that have come through in the past, it's, 30. Not, it's not always – the fuck he looks like. <laughs> Happy birthday for the eighth of Jan as well. Uh, yeah, there we go. Just uh, not far removed. He's one of those guys, mate. Like some of the best captains that I've Definitely. had. They don't have to say anything. They don't have to be the rah rah guys. A lot of the times you need your halves to be those guys. Like yep. they chat and get them around the park. So what, I think you know one of the, the better. I always talk about you know Jamie. I had Jamie Lyon, mate, and he was the grouse, and he just didn't, he didn't want to say anything. He didn't want to do any media. He didn't really, but he did it. You know, he obviously had did to, it. Yeah. He did it well, but. Those uh, soft-spoken leaders, mate, they're the best. It's, yeah. your, it's your job to do get the chat and – Yeah, definitely. So he reminds me of Paul Gallon, you know. Obviously, yep. you grew up in Cronulla there. And yep. Mate, they're exactly the same people. Yeah, for sure. Um, how hard they train the gym and if, if there's a tough carry to be taken, he's there taking it. Yeah, grass. All right, Lukey, any uh, couple of questions that we've got come through? Yeah, through? you did answer two of them. So um, what was it like in 2016 watching your old man and the Sharks win? Oh, yeah. Obviously, being around the club and whatnot. Yeah, uh, very nervous. The last uh, sixty seconds, I just remember. Fuck, bro! I, I watched a replay of that not, not, not Will long Chambers. ago. Will I Chambers, forgot. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Will Chambers running across field. Uh, Ricky Latelli making the final tackle. There, I was just sitting in, in the stand there with my family, and um, yeah, I remember just my mum crying uh, straight after the game, and uh, that was such a special moment uh, for my family. And 
Uh, just one thing that sticks out is my old man walking in about six o'clock the next morning from <laughs> almost falling in the pool. <laughs> Gun. Yeah, we like that. Uh, does Baz have the biggest biceps at the club? <laughs> well, they're probably almost bigger than mine, maybe, but um, he's definitely a good looking coach. I know that. Well, he's the bloke. Now that he's back in, because yeah. remember how Kempi come in and he does that bloke team of, team of the year? Yep. He's, got, he's got to be the coach, Baz. Has to. Has to. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, Silver Fox Ivan's is not a bad sort as well, actually. Mm. The pen and they don't know how to do them out of penny. Mm. What's the city I don't know about up? that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then last one, who's your favourite teammate at the Doggies now? Uh, first of all, I got on really good with Adam Elliott, but I'm going to have to scrap him and go with Nick Kotrick. Oh, Nick Cotter. There was that re- yeah. you, it was a photo of you two out the other day. Yeah. yeah. All happy Fuck, he's training. looking big, man. He's huge. Um, yeah, he's going to be nice. <laughs> yeah. Chuck him a little bit he's early He's a good ball. bloke. You know, he likes to have a bit of a party and have a, hang out with the boys and that. So um, the Serbian king. Yeah, Speaking great. of bloats, he's, he's up there too. He's a bloke. Oh, he's the best ever. Is there a more Canterbury Bulldogs player than him? In what way? <laughs> just, he just fits the club. Yeah, like, no, he suits the, he suits suits the, the club. colours. You're right. When I, um, what position is he going to play there? Is he going to play centres? Yeah, I think so. He's been yeah. training there quite a bit. Uh, but he can is play. Is he on your edge? Uh, they've been swapping over. Okay. Every, everything's pretty undecided yeah, at the moment. Uh, yeah. I suppose there's a few spots up for grabs, isn't there? Still January. But um, I'm, he'll definitely be there somewhere, I imagine. Yeah, well, then that takes us on to our final question. And this is, this is probably the hardest hitting question that we ask everyone. It's the, and I think I, I, know, I feel like I might know a few of these answers, but I'll ask you anyway. Um, out of the new Bulldogs, out of your new Bulldogs teammates, who would you least like to date your sister? Do you have a sister, by the way? Two sisters, yep. There we go. So this, will, this is... You can pick two teammates. I feel it. I can feel it. You've you got an option for, for either question. Who would you least like to date your sister out of your team and why? I'm going to say least Adam Elliott because... <laughs> Uh, things aren't small. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you don't want that. No, it's no. just it'd make me feel quite uncomfortable, you yeah, know. And, yeah. um... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the best we've had. Yeah, that is the best. Um, and who would I let? Yeah, and and then who would you? Not like? many, but yeah. um... <clears throat> you'll watch out. They might think they can yeah, have a crack I now know. too. They'll be on the Instagram straight away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say Jake Avrilo. He's yep. a young kid, you know. Don't really know what he's like yet. Yep. But um, you know, there's got a bit of swagger about yeah, him. He's a good sword too. Eh? He's good. Good. good if he's not bad. Yeah. Is it yeah. for the same reason as the first one, or no. just the opposite? <laughs> opposite, or? opposite reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's part of my gang, man. Did he? Um, yeah. Well, uh, thanks for that, brother. Like I said, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching you play this year. You, your scope spotlights. We actually stopped doing the scope spotlights. We're going to make that more exclusive content too, Lukey. Moving forward. Yeah, we've just been waiting. We're supposed to go on the new website. That's kind of. I just parked it, so we've got content driving onto there soon. And um, yeah. Oh, but yeah, like I said, I'm excited seeing you play, bro. I'm excited for the dogs this year and I uh, wish you all the best. Cheers, mate. Um, thanks for having me.